Dimension standards in Vectorworks is what shows and controls the appearance of a dimension object. So if I go to add a dimension, I'll just use constrained and chain mode. We'll just add a few dimensions at arbitrary points here, give you an idea. By default, all dimensions will have a dimension standard. So in here, if you go to dimension standard, this will be set to arch. The other very common one is ISO. And this just controls what the actual labeling looks like. It controls the offsets, it controls the witness line, it controls the markers. Basically everything about a dimension can be controlled this way. There are a few labeled loaded by default. These are all singles, these are dual, which we'll explain in a moment. And then you can go to custom ones. We can either customize it here, or we can go to file, document settings, document preferences, and under dimensions we can customize it here as well. This basically takes you to the same one that the custom one will be there. So here I have a quickly made custom dimension standard, but you can make a new one. You can make as many as you like. And you can even save these into your templates so that you can use them after the fact. Once we're editing the dimension standard, which was very simple, we just clicked edit. The top area is pretty self-explanatory. It shows you in the units that you're using for your document, the distances between various objects. And there's diagrams that explain the distance. So like here's the offset of the labels, the offset of the witness lines, multiple dimensions, angular dimensions. It'll basically show you all the different values and how you can adjust the spacing between them or the, the length of them. Whether you have witness lines or not, you know, simple things that are pretty common to dimension styling. Normally what you'll do is you'll come up with a dimension standard that you prefer and you'll stick with that one, leave it in your template and you'll go from there. You can control the end markers, which are these little points here, currently they're at hatches. Uh, most importantly and probably the least known is under the, that you can do a text style through this. So you can actually control the style of the dimension text. And that'll control any of the dimensions that are set to that style. So we'll now set this to the new one that we just edited and it'll adjust the text there. If we go up to the resource manager and we pick text styles, we'll move it here. This is the text style we just applied to these dimensions. And if we change things about this text style, it'll actually update in the any dimension style that's using this style. So we'll go ahead and edit this. We'll change, we'll just make them bold and italic and we'll make the point size a little larger. You can see the update here. Click OK. You see the change both here and on the dimension itself. That's just a faster way of giving you control over all the dimensions. So no matter how many dimensions I had in my document, if they were using this particular text style in the dimension style, that will override it. Now, if you have a dimension object selected and you override it with this text style, that will override it. So by default, it's going to use the one in the dimension standard. Otherwise, it'll use the one so you can override individual ones here if you want. The second thing that's probably the least known, we'll zoom in a little closer to make this more obvious. We'll go ahead and edit this dimension standard. This is the one we're using. We'll customize this one a little more. Is the layout. So by default it'll be single, but then you have options for dual side by side or dual stacked. If we set it to dual stacked, it will show two types of dimensions. It'll show one on the top and one on the bottom. The dual view, we can either choose the primary, the secondary, or both by default. So we'll click OK. Click OK to this, and you'll see a second set of dimensions will show up. They're using the same units, they're just oriented a little differently. So why is this? That's because under File, Document Settings, and Units, these are the two places you control the values. There's the primary units, which is this pane here, this area. Then over here is for dual dimensions, like we just didn't set up in that dimension standard. And we can even set this to a different unit. So we can even set this instead to inches. We'll have it show the unit mark. Decimal's fine. Click OK. It'll update and you can see we're using inches now. So now this is being measured both in meters and in inches and we're showing the unit mark for that. These operate independently. So if I go back in here and go to document settings and units, in the primary if I start showing the unit mark and click OK, it'll update and now show my meters and it'll show inches. This is the easiest way to do two different types of dimensioning at the same time. And then of course if I draw more dimension objects, I'll just draw a few up here in the middle of nowhere. You'll see how these don't match. That's because these are by default using the arch standard. I can switch them to use custom dimension standard. But if I didn't want to have to do that, you can simply select it up here. When you go to use the dimension, either the dimension tools has this option. 
you can choose the dimension standard from the top here, and then right from the start, any dimensions you make will have this new format applied to them, this new standard.